What is up guys? I'm hanging out here in one of the luxurious Bloom Audio cubicles here today to talk to you about the Meze Audio Rye Penta. I have been looking so forward to getting my hands on one of these. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Uh, I first heard it a few months ago and have been excited ever since to get it in stock and ready to sell at Bloom Audio. Personally, I'm also a huge fan of what Antonio Meze and team have been putting out. I love the Empyrean, and uh, when I first heard these, I knew that these were going to be one of the class-leading IEMs uh, out there in the price range. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to open the box here. haven't touched it yet. This is fresh off the plane from Romania. I'm going to take a look what's inside. Uh, I'm going to spend a couple days listening to them before I come back with my uh, impressions. But uh, I just wanted to film quickly, you know, what's in here so that uh, you have a good idea of what to expect if you're thinking about purchasing one. Let's get this box open. All right, as you can see here, they uh, put all of the ear tips and in individual little uh, foam cutouts here. It's kind of an interesting uh, way of, of packing it. Uh, nice leather case here. If I can pull this out. Feels high quality. Inside is the 3.5 to 6.3 millimeter adapter, cleaning tool, cable, pretty nice pouch. Looks like it also has one of those airplane adapters as well. Inside is the user manual, which uh, has the tech specs, some marketing blurbs, terms and conditions, etc. There's an audio sticker. You can stick that on the back of your laptop if you're into that kind of stuff. And then uh, the IEMs themselves and the ear tips. It's nice, solid, anodized aluminum. All right, I'm going to turn off this video and uh, start listening. But uh, so far, fairly impressive packaging design and a uh, fair amount of included accessories. A lot of nice tips here. Looks like there's some uh, marshmallow, silicone, maybe uh, double, double flange type. Pretty good uh, amount of included tips. All right, I'll talk to you soon. All right, so I've given easily six hours of solid playing time to the Rye Penta. Uh, last night, I was at home and I listened to probably two or three hours, cycled through some of my favorite uh, test tracks, some of my favorite albums. Um, and then this morning, listened to uh, a lot of stuff on Room while I was working. And I think I have a pretty good uh, basis of um, experience to, to be able to speak to the Rye Penta. Um, spent most of my time listening on my Mojo, but also tested on the Hugo 2 and the IDSD Pro. Um, sounds scaled pretty good, but you know, I, I have a pretty good ear for what the Mojo uh, signature sounds like, and I've listened to ton of headphones on it so for the most part I'm, I'm going off of of what it sounds like on the mojo um so the Rye Penta, it's um it's very good but isn't necessarily what i expected um coming from so looking at this from a couple of, of places thinking about what meze has been doing kind of like their evolution uh, the Empyrean here being 
one of my very favorite headphones, period. Um, they're, they're, they're borrowing a lot of their uh, design philosophy and uh, really artistic genius over from the Empyrean to the Rypenta. But, you know, the Rypenta needs to be compared really to IEMs in the similar price point. I'm very, very spoiled. I, I, I listen to a wide variety of very high-end headphones and IEMs all the time, um, both as a part of my livelihood and also just being in the industry, going to audio shows. I've heard a wide range of gear. So, you know, this is a 1099 set of IEMs. Is it fair to, to draw mental comparisons to $2,600 IEMs? Probably not. Is it is it fair to compare it to three thousand dollar over the year headphones? No, I don't. I don't think so. So, you know, you need to really like when when people give you their opinion on uh, a pair of headphones or, or earphones. Like, there's so many factors that go into it, and price is, is certainly one of them. So, you know, are, are these excellent? Yes. Are they excellent for ten ninety nine? I'm not sure. Uh, and that's that's just the type of thing that you need to uh, subjectively decide yourself and and ideally if possible if you're near a dealer or you know you shop from a dealer that has a great return policy like Bloom Audio um, to be able to to audition these and decide you know how they are for you is very important. So um, you know overall I, I'm impressed by them. I, I think. I think Meze, for this being their first legitimate pair of high-end IEMs, I think they did an excellent job. Um, they didn't wow me and blow me the uh, blow me away the same way that um, the Empyrean did when I first heard it. And again, completely different price point, completely different type of category. But where the Empyrean has a very like non-neutral kind of bass boosted more fun and uh, and like pleasurable type of a sound to it. The Rye Penta is very, very neutral, um, like surprisingly neutral. Um, not quite boring, but certainly leaning on the side of boring neutral. When you've heard um, other IEMs that are much more dazzling and sparkly and uh, bass boosted or uh, you know v-shaped like these are definitely like reference IEMs for better or for worse so if if that's what you want a very neutral sound signature um, with fairly decent detail and uh, resolution and um, you know that that's the, that's the type that you're looking for I think the Ripenta is fits that category perfectly. It's a very neutral, I would say medium to high end set of IEMs. Um, the closest competitor, I mean, you know, is obviously the Andromeda. It's the exact same price. Uh, it's one of the most popular IEMs on the planet right now. And uh, it's, you know, it's, it's very different from the Andromeda. The Andromeda is much more of a sweeter, um, punchier uh, type of a sound with a very holographic soundstage. The soundstage of the Rypenta is much more focused and narrow. Um, very, it, it, I mean, for the type of feel that IEMs could often have of being like in your head, these definitely feel in your head. Um, you, you don't get the same speaker-esque uh, type of wider soundstage that some IEMs have been able to uh, to produce. Um, so they're, they're definitely uh, more of a focused, narrow soundstage. Vocals in particular are like just right in the middle of your head. I, I mean, there's very little um, width to the mid-range. Um, I'm not saying that as it's, as it's a hugely negative thing, but it's... Uh, the sound stage is, is not very wide. Um, the fit and finish is phenomenal. So here's one thing that I, I tell people all the time when they ask my opinion about the Empyrean is that 
The Empyrean is the most comfortable pair of headphones I've ever worn, period. Um, I have a massive, disgustingly huge head, and this headphone fits it perfectly. The way that the, um, uh, whatever this thing's called, distribution wing, I forget what it's called, but the way that the weight is distributed and the way that the, um, the thick, comfortable pads just fit perfectly on my head. I, totally uh, a um, tangent here, but Empyrean is extremely comfortable. Guess what? The Rypenta, probably the most comfortable IEMs I've worn. So universal IEMs, obviously. So you basically have, uh, you know, one of the key, um, you know, important features to consider for IEMs is how comfortable are they? How do they fit? And while every ear shape is different, for mine, these fit perfectly. Um, the anatomical uh, design that they uh, uh, made here with the uh, CNC um, or aluminum chassis, whatever it is, uh, it, it just it fits in the inner part of your ear perfectly. Um, ear tips, you know, I tried a few different ones. Um, the silicone ones that come with it fit great, uh, give a nice seal, and just you know, after three four hours of nonstop listening. There was never one point where I was like adjusting them or found them a little bit fatiguing or uncomfortable. And believe me, I have definitely experienced that with other IEMs. So that's a huge, huge win for the Rypenta. Very, very comfortable. Um, and, you know, Antonio Meze and his team, like, I, I know that they pay very close attention to comfort and fit and finish. And they're, you know, they, they did a phenomenal job here with the right hand throw the right penta. So, you know, definite huge win there. Um, the overall package and like value that you get for 1099 is, you know, very good. Uh, you get a wide range of tips. This is a very nice leather carrying case. Um, you know, added things like a, a 6.3 millimeter adapter and stickers and a cleaning tool and stuff like that. It's, it's a, very good value for the price. Um, so overall, like I've really enjoyed my time with it. I think it's uh, an outstanding set of IEMs that is, you know, certainly worth um, considering if you're in the thousand dollar price range. Um, I think you do need to listen to it because you know the the frequency response of this being very neutral, seemingly to just be you know no dips or peaks, but just kind of like a flat. Uh, uh, type of, of sound to it. Um, you know, if you're into EQing, which I'm not, um, I, I'm sure that, you know, you can boost the bass a little bit or, or, you know, boost the treble if, if, if that suits you. But, um, out of the box with, uh, you know, the amplifier, the DAX that I tried, it's very, very neutral. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that that's, that's, okay that if that's if that's the the type of sound that Meze was going for here they achieved it um but it's it's not a you know it doesn't have that like euphoric fun like exciting type of sound to it um so that's just something to consider and I, I think you know as I mentioned already like if you have the ability to audition these um especially compared to other ones in its price range like you're going to be able to uh, tell pretty quickly if it's the right, you know, type of sound you're going for. Um, but I think you're going to be thrilled with the, the, um, overall quality and construction and, um, you know, everything that comes with it. It's a really nice cable. Um, the, uh, connectors feel very high quality and snug. Um, it's rhodium plated, the, uh, 3.5 millimeter, Connector is very, very like heavy, high quality, sturdy. Um, it's it's really uh, a phenomenal, you know, first effort into uh, high end IEMs by Meze, and uh, you know, based on their trajectory, I have every reason to believe that at one point they're going to put out incredible fifteen hundred dollar IEMs and maybe two thousand dollar IEMs and. And you know a lot of that technology will trickle down into the 500 and sub 500 dollar level. Um, so, 
you know, they're doing great work. My, my highest respect for them. And, you know, I've, I've met a lot of people on their team and, and uh, had a great rapport with them. They're great people. And they're designing this stuff in Romania. Um, this is their passion. This is uh, Antonio Meze's uh, just artistic genius behind a lot of this. So um, I'm certainly rooting for Meze. I think they put out a great product here and um, you should absolutely uh, give it a listen if you can, because it's, uh, it's a great pair of IMs. If you have any more questions about the Rye Penta, um, feel free to leave a comment or message me. You can visit bloomaudio.com where we have it in stock. Um, you can reach out if you want to know anything more about it that I haven't uh, uh, covered here. Um, but I'm going to continue to listen to it. I think that you know the comfort factor is huge. Um, the fact that these are the type of IEMs that I can pop in, leave in for hours, and not really be fidgeting around with is, is great. And I'm continuing to listen to them. So. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.